We begin today's show in Ecuador, where tens of thousands of people led by indigenous leaders are expected to again bring the country to a standstill today in massive ongoing anti-government protests. Demonstrators flooded the streets of Quito Tuesday to decry government-imposed austerity measures and a steep hike in fuel prices, despite a severe police crackdown. Civil unrest has been growing since President Lenin Moreno uh, and ended a decades-old fuel subsidy program last week as part of a so-called reform plan imposed by the International Monetary Fund after Ecuador took a $4.2 billion loan from the IMF earlier this year. He also announced plans to cut public sector job uh, wages by 20 percent, require public workers to pay a day's worth of pay to the government each month, and slash their vacation days in half. On Tuesday, the sixth consecutive day of massive demonstrations, protesters successfully pushed through security lines at the National Assembly before being pushed back by police. Indigenous protesters approached the presidential palace. Police responded with violence and tear gas. On Tuesday night, President Moreno declared an 8 p.m. curfew in areas near government buildings. This is one of the protesters, Santiago Iguamba, in the streets of Quito. Just like in the period of the economic reforms in 1983, we want these economic measures to be canceled. Indigenous communities are here in front of you. We have the vote. Long live the indigenous movement. President Moreno declared a state of emergency last week, allowing police to raid homes without warrants and suspending the right to assembly. Hundreds of people have been arrested. The government's also cracking down on the media. Police raided the community radio station Radio Pinchincha Universal on Tuesday. Meanwhile, the defense minister, Osvaldo Jarin, has called protesters terrorists and criminals, threatening them with the threat of lethal weapons in a television interview Monday. Day. Yesterday's mass protests come one day after President Moreno said in a national address he's temporarily moving the government from Quito to the southern city of Guayaquil. He accused his political opponents of attempting a coup and vowed not to restore the fuel subsidy. What has happened here in recent days is not a manifestation of social discontent in protests of government decisions. No, the lutins, vandalism and violence show there is an organized political motive here to destabilize the government and break the constitutional order, break democratic order. Ecuador's former president, Rafael Correa, said Tuesday Moreno must resign or call early elections. And protesters are vowing to stay in the streets. This is the indigenous leader, Jaime Vargas, speaking to reporters in Quito earlier this week. Different social groups are going up against the neoliberal government of Lenin Moreno, mobilizing, uniting and organizing as the only way to defend the interests of the Ecuadorian people. For more, we go to Quito, Ecuador, where we're joined by David Cordero Heredia, a law professor at Pontifical Catholic University. He's one of the lawyers representing protesters who've been detained in this latest round of protests. He was previously a human rights fellow at Cornell University. Uh, professor Cordero Heredia, Thank you so much for being with us. I know there's a bit of a sound delay, but if you can start off by talking about just talk about the, what's happening in the streets right now and what they are responding to and what are their demands. Hi, Amy. Good morning. Um, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, right now we are in a state of a state of a, a exception since last week. Uh, we got protests in the streets when manifestations, especially for the indigenous movement. Um, we calculate like over 2,000 indigenous peoples are now in the capital. Uh, yesterday there was a, um, there was a very tough repression from the from the armed forces of of Ecuador because of the state of exception. Uh, the, um, the president is able to use arm uh, the the army to repress people in the streets. So we are very, very worried about, about that. We know that the international standards about human rights prohibit to use uh, the army to repress people in the streets in these kind of manifestations. Uh, we demand to the constitutional, we demanded to the constitutional court uh, to take, um, 
uh, to take a role in this and to revoke the the, the order of President Moreno of, of the state of uh, state of exception, and to demand him to respect human rights of the of the people in the streets and and the court uh, sadly. Um, Disappoint the, the, the people of Ecuador, and he he said that the, the state of exception is constitutional. So right now we got 30 days in which the president will have uh, full powers uh, and the use of, of the of the full armed forces of, of Ecuador. Uh, we got several detainees. The the president himself said yesterday that over 2,000 people all over the country are detained. Uh, we we know for sure that yesterday uh, yesterday night, 83 people were detained, indigenous people especially, uh, in in the protests in the streets, and they were not con uh, they were not taken to the official place where they should be um, uh, presented to a judge. That is the the Unidad de Flagrancia, where they should be um, conducted. Uh, we, we suspect that they were taken to a military base uh, in, the, in the north part of the, of the city. Uh, but we don't have, uh, right now, we don't have uh, um, official information about them. We are very, very worried about them. We, we presented an habeas, habeas corpus uh, writ uh, to the courts. And we we are we are trying to to know where where they are. Well, Professor Cordero Heredia, I wanted to ask you. Most people, when they hear the word austerity measures, it's it's kind of vague. But some of the specifics that uh, this IMF deal uh, f uh, is requiring uh, of, of of Ecuador are amazing, considering where Ecuador has gone in the past few years. They're talking about raising fees for all government services and for utilities, uh, imposing a new value-added tax, a consumption tax. Uh, Raising the ceiling on interest rates so that uh, banks can charge whatever interest rates uh, they want. Uh, and they're also prohibiting the central bank from lending money to, uh, to the public sector. Uh, and uh, so all of this stuff, considering where Ecuador has gone uh, during the, uh, uh, during, uh, the uh, reign of his, of his uh, predecessor, uh, the poverty rate in Ecuador dropped from 64 percent in 2000 to only 21 percent. That's an astonishing drop in the number of people un in poverty. And this is going to really reverse all of these gains uh, that were made under uh, Pre uh, President Correa, although there are many criticisms of President Correa. How did this happen, especially since Lenin Moreno is from the same party as President uh, Correa? Yes, this is this is re uh, really interesting. Um, what what is going on now in Ecuador is that we got a budget gap uh, that should be that sh should be filled in in some way. Um, I think the whole population is uh, no is conscient that uh, some kind of measure should be taken. Um, at this this problem uh, started with President Correa, who was not. Um, who, who was who was not uh, uh, efficient using or taking uh, measures of uh, economy measures in, in Ecuador, and he gave President Correa, uh, President Moreno, a big problem regarding regarding budget. So it's not a problem that started with President Moreno; it started with President Correa. And when President Correa needs extra funds to to to, to fund in the state, he started a. a a very aggressive campaign of extraction of, of oil and mining, in, especially in the Amazon region, in the indigenous people's territory without consultation. And, and the indigenous movement had been protesting since Correa and now with President Moreno, um, because, because these two presidents have been uh, ineffective of uh, uh, finding a, another another way to fund in the state that the extraction of oil and, and mining. So the, the problem is not recent, uh, but right now President Moreno, uh, of all the measures that he can he can choose to take, he's uh, taking the recipe of the IMF. So basically, he is gonna he's gonna um, uh, decrease tax for the wealthies. Uh, he's um, 
uh, he's going to increase gas prices by eliminating subsidies, and that that is going to impact the the most poor people in the in the society, uh, especially because the 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 fares of the bus fares will be will be increasing, and the whole chain of of prices will be will be affected, and also the changes to the labor laws. And that is really, really worrisome because he wants to dismantle the workers' protection that we have in the law for several decades. And, and in the past, maybe 20 years ago, when we were discussing the, the, the free trade zone of the Americas, indigenous, indigenous peoples rise and, and protest against, against that, that initiative, and actually they were able to stop that. And, and now we got the same attempt to to dismantle workers' protection, and and there is there is a, a, a strong campaign against public officers right now. And some of the some of the measures that Moreno is uh, is uh, is willing to to introduce um, attack directly to those workers. They trying to um, uh, to decrease the the pay vacations to to them. They're gonna take one one day of salary of the public services, and 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 also the new people uh, that will work for the state will will work with less less payment and with uh, less stability of in their in their work contracts. So. So we got all these measures that are going to impact the, 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 the worker class in, in, in Ecuador. Um, and and what, what we see with President Moreno is the lack of, uh, of, um, uh, of dialogue with the, with the social movements and with the, with the workers, and, and with the worker class especially. Um, we, we see, as Naomi Klein describes in, in his book about the, the, the doctrine of the, the shock doctrine, um, that there is, a, there is a package of neoliberal measures that will be uh, better received if the, if the society is uh, weak, and they are trying to weaken in the society by repression, by using the army, by using using the army against uh, protesters. Um, that's where, where we are living now in, in, in Ecuador. <clears throat> Professor David Cordero Heredia, as you speak to us from Quito, Ecuador, if you can talk about the state of the media, um, what media is allowed to operate and what media is getting shut down? We were just showing video of um, uh, radio Pinchincha Universal, um, the radio that was reporting on what was happening on the ground being stormed and shut down by police. Um, now Pinchincha is saying that the radio director, Washington Yapez, um, there's an order to put him in jail on accusation of inciting discord among citizens. What are people learning? And also, do you have a death toll? Reports of um, gas bombs being thrown at medics and hospitals hospital tents, um, and the defense minister saying they will use live ammunition, um, the president and defense minister calling the protesters terrorists. Yes, indeed, Amy. We we are we are receiving reports of uh, journalists that have been attacked by the, the police. We got several images that are in, in the internet now. And, and we, we got to divide the media right now in independent media and the mainstream media right now. And what mainstream media is, uh, is, is doing is taking the discourse of the government. And, and the discourse of the government basically is that President Correa and, and, or former President Correa and President Maduro from Venezuela are, uh, are putting these, these protesters together and, and is diminishing the response of the indigenous people and the, the students and the workers that are, that are the people who actually are in the streets. So for one, in one side, we got that discourse and, and the media is reproducing that, that discourse. And the other side, we got the independent media. And independent media is reporting the aggressions of the, of the uh, of both the police and the army to, to the protesters uh, right now, and uh, but the but the armed forces are not are not discriminating between these two groups. 
So the only reports of br uh, police brutality that we can see in the mainstream media is basically the brutality against journalists and not against uh, not against the people. And besides that, what what the ma mainstream media is reporting is is basically the riots that actually are are happening right now in some parts of the of the of the country and are reporting uh, the discourse of President Correa and his and his allies. And, and tweets from President Maduro uh, saying that they are supporting the, the, the march. But actually what, what happened is that the, the indigenous people movement had been in the in, in resistance of President Correa presidency and, and probably President Correa presidency was the was the most uh, hard repression government that we have seen in the last years against indigenous peoples. Um, human rights organizations defend over two, 200 indigenous leaders that were prosecuted by, by President Correa government. And so uh, right now that, that President Correa and, and, and his, his allies are trying to say that they are supporting the, the people, are supporting the indigenous movement, is a lie. And, and what is happening right now in Quito is that we have, uh, we, have, um, we have protests, we have social movements that are tired of, of being the ones to be impact or to, to be asked to sacrifice in these, in these uh, moments of, of the uh, of, where we need to take new me economic measures. So um, the, this, this discourse is, is the one that we can hear of the, on the mainstream media. And, uh, Professor, just quickly, if you could comment, you mentioned of Venezuela and President Maduro. What's been the impact of the continuing crisis in Venezuela and the, the flight of so many Venezuelans out of the country uh, to the situation right there in Ecuador? Well, we, we are receiving we are receiving uh, thousands of people from Venezuela that are fleeing from a from a humanitarian crisis that is uh, that, that is happening in Venezuela, and the impact to the society, um, uh, the the economical crisis is uh, well, is is the crisis that we can wait uh, of one one of these kind of situations. But we had a lot of support for the international community and UN agencies. Uh, however, we got an increasing discourse from the government, uh, a xenophobic discourse. Um, President, President Moreno um, have put in force some measures to, uh, to ban the migration from, from Venezuelan people. Um, some of them, uh, most of them, are refugees under international law. However, uh, they, they got to apply to a humanitarian visa in, 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 from Colombia basically uh, before enter to to Ecuador and, and and all these discourse of xenophobia or all these discourse about um, the the security being impacted by 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 Venezuelans um, is is deeply impacting the the Venezuelan population living in Ecuador um, and and one of the things that is is taking advantage uh, president Moreno is 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 about what what people feel about what feel about the Venezuelan uh, migration in Ecuador? So he's blaming Venezuelans and he's blaming President Maduro of some of the some of the violence that ha have been happening in, in the streets. But he don't, he doesn't have proofs of that. And probably uh, the the right now the protests the, are are happening all over the country. So probably. Some people from Venezuela are participating in, in, in those, but he doesn't have proof of that. And, and what, the, as, as human rights organizations um, that, that are with the people in the streets, uh, in the jails, checking what is going on, uh, we don't have evidence that Venezuelans are participating in the protests or they are uh, producing the violence. Uh, so this discourse of Maduro sending Venezuelans to destabilize the, 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 the government of, of Moreno is, is a lie. And, Professor, is a national strike called for today? Yes. Uh, workers, workers should be joining the, the national strike today. Uh, also, indigenous people that are coming from all over the, the country are, are walking from their communities to the, to the, to the cities. 
Um, so the, the, the national strike is, uh, is continuing. Uh, they, are demanding, they are demanding not just to go back with, this, uh, with this, these neoliberal measures that uh, Moreno is trying to implement, but also to uh, stop the extractivism in, in Ecuador. The, the indigenous peoples, now that we are talking about climate change all over the world, indigenous people are offering us an alternative a sustainable alternative of living. Uh, they, they want to, to protect their jungles, they want to protect their territories, and, 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 and that, that is the message that they have to the world, that, that they got uh, uh, another way to see the world, that they can, they can join the conversation about climate change, and, and that, that will be a very important important ideas that, that we should take uh, into account. Uh, however, President, former, President, uh, uh, former President Correa and, and President Moreno is not listening to them, and they, they want to extract more oil and destroy, destroying their territories and well, displace, displace them. Well, I want to thank you very um, much for being with us, Professor David Cordero Heredia, law professor at Pontifical Catholic <coughs> University in Quito, Ecuador, one of the lawyers representing protesters who have been detained in this latest round of protests in Ecuador. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to Julian Castro, yes, a presidential candidate, but also was on the border trying to escort um, migrants into the United States. We'll find out what happened. Stay with us.